The Chemin-Neuf community French, Communauté du Chemin-Neuf is a Catholic community with an ecumenical vocation. Formed from a charismatic prayer group in 1973, it has 2,000 permanent members in 30 countries, and 12,000 people serving in the community missions. Its main founder is the Jesuit father, Laurent Fabre. The community takes its name from the first meeting place, based in Lyon, 49 Monte du Chemin Neuf. A product of the charismatic renewal, the community claims to belong equally to an Ignatian spirituality. It brings together priests, lay celibates, men and women, as well as non celibates and couples with or without children. The community directs its actions around the principle of unity, unity of Christians, ecumenism, unity of men, notably between different cultures and nations, unity of couples and of families. Topic: Historical. Topic. Context Pentecostalism, a new branch of Christianity focusing on the welcoming of the Holy Spirit, evolved in the USA after 1900 in Topeka and then in Azusa Street Revival, Los Angeles. Its spectacular manifestations speaking in tongues, prophecy, healings, etc. rapidly provoked rejection from other churches Protestant or Catholic. In 1967, some Catholic students from Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, during the course of a Bible study weekend, received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. After this experience, prayer groups and communities began to expand in the Catholic Church in the USA and throughout the rest of the world. Topic: <inaudible> Origins of the community. The community was named after the first meeting in Lyon, Monte du Chemin Neuf, meaning "ascent of the new road." It was founded in the charismatic renewal and remains heavily marked by Ignatian spirituality. The community focuses its action on the principle of unity, unity of Christians, unity of men, unity of couples and families. It regularly organizes retreats for couples, families and, or engaged couples, Kanya, for divorcees, Kanya Esperance, for divorcees who have remarried. Kanya Samari, an international evangelization net for God, Fraternité Oikumenike Internationale FOI, as well as an evangelization in the neighborhood evangelization in the street, the Alpha Course, sessions for young people, theological, philosophical and artistic training, and retreats following the spiritual exercises of Ignatius of Loyola. The beginning In 1971, the Jesuit Laurent Fabre, seminarist at the time, met Mike Cordry, an American Jesuit student who was familiar with the American Charismatic Renewal, at the Diocesan Seminary in Lyon. He convinced him, together with Bertrand Le Pesant, who was later to become the founder of the Communauté du Puy de Jacob, to spend two days in prayer asking for the presence of the Holy Spirit in Le Touvé. Two young American Protestants, just back from Taizé and about to leave for a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, were also invited. At the end of this weekend, the two French men received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. After this experience, they founded a charismatic prayer group located in Monte du Chemin Neuf. In the summer of 1973, Laurent Fabre, accompanied by Bertrand Le Pesant, left for the United States to meet with American charismatics. On their return, they organized a weekend attended by 60 people, seven of them celibates, four men and three women between 22 and 32 years of age, from amongst whom Laurent Fabre decided to form a lifelong community. 
In the beginning, they favored a name taken from the Bible, but the members of the new foundation quickly realized that in the eyes of their visitors, due to their geographical location they known as the Shuman Earth. Couples quickly joined this community which added to the mix of men and women, the mix between couples and consecrated celibates. Apart from Laurent Fabre, this first community also included Jacqueline Coutelier, who had been thinking about joining the Carmelites but who has since been committed to the life of the Schumann Earth. By September 1978, the Schumann Earth had 30 adult members, living in private homes or in the three community houses at that time two in Lyon and one in Beaujolais. About 20 children lived in the community without being part of it. Topic: Development of the community. In 1980, a cycle of theological training, biblical and community-based, lasting for three months, was established in Les Pothiers, a house of the community near Ansay. It continued here another 30 years and, due to its success, spread to three locations: one in France, one in Spain, and one in the Ivory Coast. Also in 1980 the first course for couples Kanya session was launched which in 2016 is the most popular Shuma Nerf course at the beginning of the 1980s the community was invited to come to the Paris area to the Cénacle de Tigre a few miles south of Paris and to the student house based in the Rue Madame in the 6th arrondissement in Paris the community also began to grow on an international level, welcoming its first non-French members Polish, German and, Madagascan and setting up a base in Brazzaville in the Congo. In 1982, the Schumer Nerf had about 40 adult members. Also in 1980 the first course for couples Kanya session was launched which, in 2016, is the most popular Schumer Nerf course. Cardinal Albert de Courtre, Archbishop of Lyon, was particularly enthusiastic to have the community in his diocese, the number of conversions impresses me. By that time, the Schumer Nerf had about 250 members of which 20 were lifelong members, furthermore, five priests and two deacons had already been ordained and six seminarists were undergoing training. On Easter Sunday of 1986 in the Cathedral of St. Jean, together with Jean-Marc Villet, pastor of the French Reformed Church, MGR de Courtre received 19 lifelong members of the community, amongst them five couples and three Protestant members. The Archbishop assigned some missions to the Schumann Nerf, especially those relating to communication. In 1982 Emmanuel Payen, priest at La Ducherie, set up Radio Fourvière with him, which soon became known as RCF. Another member of the Schumann Nerf, Vincent de Croix Chanel, later became director of it. Dominique Ferry, for his part, was press attaché to the Cardinal from 1989 to 1992. This influence of the Schumann Nerf on diocesan life was sometimes criticized but the Archbishop responded that charismatics were only available for certain missions, notably the hospital chaplaincy of Pierre Garaud to which ten people were devoted in 1992. The apostolic section of the communion of the Schumann Nerf was created which brought together people wishing to live the spirituality of the community without being involved in all its commitments. From 1993 to 1996 the community went through a crisis leading to the departure of certain members of which some were lifelong. This crisis coincided with the publication of the books The Shipwrecks of the Spirit Les Naufragés de l'Esprit, which were very critical towards a number of charismatic communities. A former supporter not a member of the Schumer Nerf complained about sect-like practices such as brainwashing and proselytism. After the publication, it was however revealed that Thierry Baffoy had made certain inaccuracies and anachronisms regarding the Schumer Nerf. Furthermore, several bishops disputed the assertions contained in the work. M. G. R. Balland, then Archbishop of Lyon, stated, 
Wherever the community is established it accepts the advice and guidance of the bishops and puts itself at the service of all without distinction or proselytism." In 1998, a very controversial article published by the «Center Against Mental Manipulation» «Center contra les Manipulations Mentales» mentioned, amongst other new communities, the Schumer Nerf, before however mentioning in the footnotes that «certain religious practices even non-sectarian in themselves» are essential to the understanding of sectarian excesses which originate from the same. The legitimacy of these critics is, however, in question, notably by MIVILUDES which has not even mentioned the Schumer Nerf in its various annual reports since 2001. To be more precise, Henry Tink believes that these criticizers are hardly appropriate concerning the Schumer Nerf, reputed to be the wisest community, recognized by the state with the status of congregation and by the church. Since 1989, the sociologist Martin Cohen stated, with regard to the Schumer Nerf, we are not only far from a strictly charismatic legitimization of power but the distrust towards a unique inspiration from the Holy Spirit has created, far beyond a usual recourse to tradition or to authorities already in place, a sort of control by the grassroots. <laughs> Status The community is composed of lay and religious persons from all Christian denominations, Catholic, Anglican, Reformed, Orthodox. In 1984, it was recognized by Cardinal Alexandre Renard, and declared a public association of the faithful by Cardinal Albert de Courtre, Archbishop of Lyon. This canonical status allowed it to teach the Christian doctrine on behalf of the Catholic Church and to promote public worship. From a civil point of view, the community was recognized as a religious congregation by a decree from the Prime Minister of France, on 23 July 1993. In France, the community has several branches located in Lyon, Anse, Rhone, Salamieu, Acere, Oatcombe, Savoie, La Plante, Abbey Notre Dame des Dombies, Anne, Sablonso, Charente Maritime, Tigery, Esson, Chartres, Ere Lawyer, Bouvines, Nord, Marseille, Beauche du Rhone, Lavalois, Port de Seine, Paris, Villaban, Rhone, Luce Mainvilliers, Ere Lawyer, Lille, Nord, Reims, Marne, Sophia Antipolis, Alps Maritimes, Angers, Maine et Loire. The community is also present in Belgium, Brazil, Burkina Faso, Burundi, Canada, Chad, Congo, Côte d'Ivoire, the Czech Republic, Egypt, Germany, Hungary, Israel, Italy, Lebanon, Madagascar, Martinique, Mauritius, the Netherlands, Poland, Reunion, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. In 2014, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, invited young adults from around the world to join the community of St. Anselm, a Jesus-centered community of prayer facilitated by the Schumer Nerf for one year. Ruth Gledhill of Christian Today wrote that, "...the year-long program will include prayer, study, practical service and community life. Members will live a spiritual discipline compared to that of medieval monks, drawing closer to God through a daily rhythm of silence, study and prayer." At the same time they will also be immersed in the modern challenges of the global 21st century church, witnessing to the power of a pared-back disciplined faith in managing the demanding business of contemporary high-tech life. See also Intentional community Church of St. Apollinaire, Prague